Let's be real with ourselves. We knew Smash Brothers was coming to the Switch. It was only a matter of when the announcement would drop. Fortunately for fans, when came around actually a year ago as of this video. And I still can't believe it's only been that long. I remember I had to miss that direct and had to watch it after work while at the same time staying off of YouTube and Twitter. And thank goodness I did the latter, because when that direct seemed like it was over, I noticed there were about two minutes left. I knew there was something else coming. And then BAM! The game I and many others wanted to get announced, got announced. Needless to say, my levels of hype were pretty much this. But man, I don't think anyone expected to see that every single stinking playable character ever was coming back. But considering what info has been released about the fighter ballot results, namely the North American Top 5, this does make sense. After all, this ranking includes even fighters from previous games in the series. And to think, they didn't even stop there. They also brought back a ton of old stages and made several additions like the new Spirits mode and the World of Light adventure that came with it, and of course, new characters. Six new original fighters to be exact. And here's what I thought about all of them. Yes, yes, yes! Wow, they actually did it, and he looks amazing! The final major retro third-party character is here at last. This is CJ's finest hour! Uh, I'm sorry, but your reveal, at least in North America, was completely ruined by this. The trailer got us guessing on what it would be, but once this appeared, it was game set and confirmed. And you. I gotta be honest, I'm not mad that you're in, but you really shouldn't have been the final character revealed for the base roster. The game released and has since set records for both the game and the Nintendo Switch itself. That, my friends, is the power of Smash. And that brings us to this review. Now, I've been with the series since the first game on N64, and have stuck with it since. And it's amazing that this one game, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, has brought the franchise to its greatest heights. But with the game having been out for about four, five months now, give or take, what do I actually think of the game? Well, let's take a look. When you boot up the game, you're treated to the opening sequence, which is just a montage of gameplay footage just like Smash for Wii U's intro. But there's something magical about this intro. I don't know, I guess it's the way the intro utilizes the clips. It's so fluid and creative with the gameplay shots and cutscenes to the beat of Lifelight, the main theme, which will get stuck in your head after a few hearings of it. These little sparks cling on to life. Everyone caught in this struggle. <clears throat> After pressing start, if it's your first time booting up the game, you're treated to some notifications, a milestone for starting up the game, and your first spirit. What was my first spirit? Now it's Ryan time! Moving on, after all of that, you're sent to the main menu, and... Wow, the menu's actually pretty clean and not janky. When we got our first look at the game in action, one of the things it was being judged for was it just being a port of Smash for Wii U. Now that we have the game, I can confidently say that it's not. I mean, yeah, in terms of graphics and presentation, it looks like it's the same as Wii U, but all of it was enhanced. Characters look cleaner, more vibrant in color, and are filled with personality. Some of them even got different animations than before, and other characters even got redesigns. As for the rest of the game... Oh yeah, this is totally a port, hashtag sarcasm. So, where to begin? Well, I guess before we dive into each main menu mode, I might as well first touch upon... Gameplay-wise, the basic concept is still there. Attack your opponents and knock them off stage. But what makes the gameplay of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate so great is the game's execution of advanced techniques. The return of directional air dodges from melee and all of its usefulness to combat. Minus wave dashing, thank goodness the ability to cancel your dash with any smash attack. And my favorite, easier short hop attacks by pressing A and jump at the same time. Sure, defensive play got screwed over in this game in favor of a more offensive approach, but these competitive techniques are overall refined and easier to pull off than ever before. It's oriented to competitive players, but easy enough for beginners to get a grasp of. No one's getting left out. Now on to the modes. Smash mode is what you'd expect. It's the typical versus mode with different ways to play. You've got regular Smash, Custom Smash, and even local tourney mode is here again. But then you have the new modes, Squad Strike and Smash Down. With Squad Strike, it's like they took the best part of Smash Tour from Wii U, the final match where individual characters are your stocks, and made an entire game mode out of it. Nice! And Smash Down? Well, if you've ever played Arena Assault from Fire Emblem Heroes, it's 
Basically that. What I like about these two modes is it takes what we know about the regular versus mode and shakes it up in unique ways that can't be done by simply applying a certain effect to all players like in Custom Smash or changing the rules. But on the note of rules, this is amazing! Now I can play Magicant without having to worry about this hindrance! Also Yellow Devil. Oh, and you can save your rule sets so you don't have to keep inputting them each time you want a certain set of rules. Convenience is bliss. Originally when the game launched, I was kind of disappointed with Games & More because I was expecting a lot of things in it. After all, it is supposed to be Games & More, but to me it felt more like Game & More. But thanks to version 3.0, we have Stage Builder. So this means there could be more things on the way in the future. So in its current state, Games & More lives up to its name as there are games to be played here and other non-gamey things to do too, like Mii Fighter customization and Amiibo. And yes, that training mode stage is pretty freaking sweet. But Mob Smash? It feels like they saw what came before in the one player modes of previous titles and just cherry picked the bare minimum to slap onto it. Really hope this gets expanded in future updates. Now for the most recent addition to games and more, Stage Builder. I'm still trying to get the hang of it, but from what I've experienced so far, it's a huge improvement from Wii U Stage Builder. Look at all you can do here with the platforms you edit in and all the hazards you can place into a stage. Though, you are probably better off making stages in handheld mode if you want to make things precise. And last but not least, it's time for the main attraction in Games & More, Classic Mode. No really, it's the biggest icon in this mode's menu. I love this. I love this a lot. Seriously, this is the best it's been. Wii U's Classic Mode was, well, I wouldn't say it was bad, but it was a far cry from what Classic Mode used to be. Bringing it back to its roots while making it fresh by giving each character an individual and unique Classic Mode run was a genius idea. I love how these runs represent the characters. For example, Kirby likes to eat, so for his run, food items constantly appear. And for the final showdown, Kirby doesn't fight Master Hand. Instead, he fights Marks, who is as creepy as ever. Did I mention I love this mode? Also, proper boss battles are back. Yes! And again, it's a unique run for each character, so there's a hefty amount of replay value in just seeing what each character's run has to offer. My only gripe is that each character's individual run is the exact same each time you go back and play it, with no alterations to stages you battle on or which characters you fight. Don't get me wrong, the mode's replay value is still there because there's so many characters, but having it different each time would have boosted the replay value even more. Again, like Smash Mode, it's what you'd expect. There's a shop like in Smash 4, but now you can purchase Mii Fighter costumes and even music with in-game currency. And since the vault is where you can find the music for this game, let me just take this time to say that the music in Ultimate is UNBELIEVABLE! Songs that I felt should have been in the last game are here, music that was only ever in the original Super Smash Bros. is also here, and the new remixes are a feast for the ears! The downside is that a lot of them are trimmed down from their original version, just like how some of the music was in Smash 4, the Melee remix of the DK rap being the biggest offender. Maybe they'll fix this issue in a later update? Who really knows? Everything else here is self-explanatory, but the last one I want to touch upon for Vault is... Replays. <sighs> Look, there's nothing inherently wrong with replays, except they still get deleted when new version updates come out. Now, they tried to address this by allowing you to convert replays into videos that get saved even after a new version update is released, but the video quality is so bad, you're better off recording your replays with a capture device. They did put in a video editor into the game. While it's nice to compile your replays into a single video, you can only put in replays you've converted into videos, which means you'll have to go in and make each individual replay a video. It's as tedious as it sounds. Oh, and you can only edit using videos made in the current software version. Seriously, are they just unable to make anything from an older version of the game work with the new one? Also, Nintendo, please make it so that the camera control instructions are not on screen by default every time you view a replay. Cake, thanks! Oh boy, here we go. In terms of functionality, my opinions for online are the same as Smash for Wii U. It's not perfect, but it works. But as for the execution for what you can do online, there are things I like and things I can't stand. For Fun and For Glory have been done away with, and in their place are Quick Play and Arenas. Arena mode is a cool idea. You can play in private rooms with your friends, or go into public arenas and fight random people there. My problem is, it's one match at a time. So if there are multiple people in the same arena waiting for a chance to play, Get in line, son! We're gonna be here a while. 
And honestly, I don't want to wait for that long to play a match when Quick Play can give the matches I want in less time. Also, from what I've heard, the stability of the connection in an arena is based on all people in the arena, whether they are playing a match, waiting in line, or just spectating. This means that matches in arena can get pretty laggy. As for Quick Play, just be thankful the preferred rules actually sort of work now as opposed to when the game launched. Because for the whole month before the fix, Quick Play was a mess. But overall, my experience with it has been pretty okay. Sure, I've gotten lag here and there, but nothing too crazy. But one thing I can't stand in both online modes is, once you select your character, you're stuck with that character and can't switch to a new one in between matches. You were able to switch characters in between matches in previous games in the series. So why can't we do it in Ultimate? Please fix this! But my biggest gripe with online is Elite Battles. When you start the game, you don't have this option available. The only way you're getting into Elite Battles is by increasing the global smash power of individual characters into the top percentage of players around the world. What that percentage is? Well, it's kind of up in the air on what the actual percentage could be. And you can only play Elite Battles with just the characters whose GSP is in this top percentage. To which I ask, why? Why can't we play Elite Battles with every character upon gaining access to it? Is it because it collects data for specific characters for updates? Well, screw that noise. It's incredibly tedious to get the GSP of 75 plus characters into the top percentage. What's worse is you can actually lose your access to Elite Battles if the GSP for the characters you have in Elite Battles drops below the top percentage, which can happen even if you aren't playing online. This is ridiculous, and it makes no sense at all. Why? Well, it's because of the wording in the November Direct regarding Elite Battles. When you reach this level, feel free to pat yourself on the back. You're good, period. This tells me that once you get Elite Battles, you have permanent access to it and don't have to worry about losing your ability to play in it. Boy, were they wrong, because that's not how it works at all and it really ticks me off that they said it like that. Why couldn't Elite Battles be like Ranked or League modes in Splatoon 2 and have a feature akin to Rank X or League power rankings? I expected better. Oh, and with 3.0, you can view and share replays and custom stages for the whole world to see. Nothing much to it, but it's a nice distraction. Like, seriously, some of this stuff is hilarious. Now on to a much, much brighter note. This mode. You guys, this mode? It's freaking awesome. The best way I can describe Spirits mode is event matches on steroids. steroids. For Spirit Board, the premise is straightforward. Choose from a selection of spirits to battle, complete its challenge, shoot the spirit from the barrier if you can, and claim your prize. What isn't straightforward, and what makes spirits mode a lot of fun, are the battles themselves. Each of them is designed to represent the spirit you're fighting. Let's take, oh, Melia's spirit battle for example. The match has you fighting a Palutena on battlefield form Gower Plains, with a Shulk helping her out. Palutena's magic attacks are powered up, and the floor is poisonous. The condition of powered up magic attacks is a reference to the fact that Melia is essentially the mage character of Xenoblade Chronicles. As for the poisonous floor, well, actually there are a few things that come to mind, but personally I believe this is a reference to the first time Melia appears in Xenoblade Chronicles, where the ground she's standing on, the contaminated field, is all withered and dead because Telethia hence the floor being poison. And with all the in-depth stuff with spirits, from leveling them up, to enhancing them to new forms, to summoning new ones, to equipping your preferred spirit setup, you'll find yourself being pretty occupied with the mode just trying to collect all the spirits in the game. But then there's World of Light, which may as well be its own game. Yeah, yeah, there's a little story, everyone dies except Kirby because... Monster! and spirits control doppelgangers of the fighters. But World of Light is not about story, it's about fun. I mean, look at this map. There's so much to explore and do. You got spirit battles left and right, special areas that appear in locations separate from the main map, and of course, those awesome boss fights. Yes, it may not be a full-fledged platforming adventure like Subspace, but man is this map fun to uncover as you clear its challenge and put a broken world back together. Bottom line, spirits mode is, in my opinion, the best thing to come to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. DLC notwithstanding. It takes event matches and turns it into something fresh and new. And after Wii U's flagship mode being a big disappointment, Spirits is the mode that home console Smash really needed. 
Now, everything I've talked about up until now may be great stuff, but what makes Super Smash Bros. Ultimate so special from previous games? Because when you take a hard look at it, Ultimate is doing the same things that previous Smash Bros. games have done, adding on to what came before and refining the gameplay. Well, in my eyes, Ultimate stands out from the rest of the series because it does its best to maximize the experience and offer many ways to have fun with the game than any other Smash Bros. game that came before. The first sign of this was in the reveal of the roster. They brought back everyone! So no matter who you are, you're bound to find a character you'll enjoy, whether it's their playstyle or you just really like the character in question. Then they brought back a ton of old stages that had been absent for a while. Then they added different modes that hadn't been seen before, like Smashdown, Squad Strike, and Spirits. All brand new ways to experience Smash. And all of it is fun! That's the key word here, fun. This is something that Smash Brothers tries to do with each installment, maximize the fun. And while there may be some spots with the game that may be shoddy, like online and maybe some things in the balance department, the overall package still accomplishes its job. There's a ton to do in this game, ensuring that everyone will be enjoying it for years to come. So overall, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate lives up to its name. It's a legacy experience that doesn't seem like a rehash of Smash for Wii U. Nearly everything you could possibly want in a Smash Bros. game is here. Though it does have its shortcomings, like online, these annoyances can easily be eradicated thanks to updates. Combine that with the upcoming DLC, and the game can become even better than it already is. Whatever happens, the game has still given me great enjoyment and entertainment. For a Switch game, this is an experience you do not want to pass up. It truly is something special and ultimate. Though, let's be real, this was the best change in 3.0. Wrong! Anything can change!